Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Europa vs. 3 Divine Women's Death and Taxes, the Hoshen We're at war with Morocco right now. And Morocco's invading our vassals, which is what they're good at. I mean, our vassals have, you know, Lantec 10, Lantec 12, Lantec 14, and Lantec 14. So our vassals are not very strong. At least not these vassals. I mean, the ones up here are better. 33, 35, 34, 23... 33, 31, 35, well, 17, but Egypt started at, like, Lantec 1, and they're already up to 17, so they're catching up super-duper quick. Fooned is not catching up at all. They're at 7. Mamluks are at 29. They're fine. Anyway, we're going to continue this war and see if we can't tease out Morocco's navy. We have this little spare navy down here of 14 large ships. They're not all... Fantastic. They're decent. They're not super recent, though. So we're just going to go sit them over there in the coast of Morocco. And uh, we'll bring our main navy over to... Um, I don't know. Let's go over here and see if we can't tease them out. That'd be nice. And we built a church. Morocco wants white peace. No, they actually do something. No. We'll go to the capital now. See how they like that. Alright, we're close by. We're about to go tease out their navy. We actually don't have to tease them out. Oh, we got Rome already. Cool. Let's go help up in Siena. What's the war score for Rome? Five. Yeah, they don't value Rome very much. <laughs> oh, and our, our, our allies are over here. Romania, that's us. We even have Smaland and... Uh, Bergslagen. Go us. Britain and Cyprus are up here. Wow, I mean, that's a long way to go just for a war. Cyprus, with Lantec 35, you have no excuse for not holding on to this land. I mean, you should have easily been able to kill those stupid rebels. But for some reason, Cyprus didn't want to put any troops down here, even though this is where their main base is. This is where their center of trade is. It's where they have their national focus. But no, they kept all their troops up here in Cyprus. They didn't care. It's just dumb, but whatever. God damn, I had to keep coughing there. Anyway, let's see if we can't capture their capital. It looks like their navy's not coming out, so we'll force them out by uh, conquering Tubecall. They will have no choice. We're already up to plus one stability, by the way. Very nice. And we'll move on to Safi. Aww, Statesman gains power. Oh, damn it. Sorry, you're fired. Dumbass. Why would you do that? Why? Well, I don't have enough cultural tradition to get another statesman, and I don't see another statesman around here, and I do want another statesman. So, for now, we'll take a uh, painter. Someone young, please. Eight years, perfect. Four years, even better. Yes. And we can start getting some paintings so we can get some cultural tradition. Thank you. And we'll merge our navies, so we now have a it's very large navy. All right, over there. Almost done up there. Maybe we can actually take our own armies down to Fernando Po, since no one, no one's gone down there yet. Iberia has Cape Verde. Well, maybe we'll wait for Iberia. Maybe we'll wait for Iberia to peace out and see what they do. If they don't take Cape Verde, maybe we can get it from them. 
because I keep promising stuff, and I would like to get Cape Verde. Just, I would really, really like to get Cape Verde. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be that helpful. I don't know. All right, so Tube Call is done. We'll have to see what actually pops out of that place. Well, Fez can support 30. Ceuta can support 35. Just go heal up in Ceuta, and we'll hope for the... We'll see what we can do over here. And here's their navy. All right, so it's 139 ships versus 267. That's a very crowded sea. And we have no morale, probably because we have too many ships. I remember this problem from earlier. Oh yeah, we're, we're utterly getting destroyed here. We're, we're just losing everything here. Because we have too many ships, apparently. The waters are clogged with the vessels, and we're losing everything. Well, that sucks. Oh, goodness. Let's just go dock. Oh, we can't dock, because it hasn't been enough time yet. There we go. We lost 40 large ships, 84 light ships, all of them, 50 galleys, and all of our transports. We lost everything, even though we outnumbered them almost 2 to 1. We had way more of everything, and we just got slaughtered. Why? I'm not so sure. We had a decent captain. You know, we were at full morale when we hit the when we started the battle. We were defending, so it should give us an advantage. You know, he's not a bad admiral. But, yeah, that was our entire navy, so we no longer have any navy. So, you know, we have dollars. So, you know, whatever. Shit happens, right? It's amazing that we lost so many ships in such a short amount of time. I mean, that really was super duper quick. And then we get some heavy frigates. Now oh, we can do a slider change too, so let's do that. I'm going to keep going towards navy, because obviously we need to, because our navy sucks. Whoa, lose 17,000 ducats in land tech. Huh, wow. Nah, yeah, whatever. Our land tech is good. <coughs> God damn it, I can't stop coughing. It's really annoying. Breathing would be nice if I could... Breathing would be easier if I could just not have to cough all the time. Oh, and off-screen, off-camera, I went to war with Crete because they had no allies, and they are reformed, and the defender of the form, reformed faith was, like, Prussia or something, and they were currently getting invaded by Twer or something. They're probably not going to join, and they didn't, so it was just us against Crete, and guess what? We won. So we are going to give that to... Byzantium, we actually tried to give it to them like six times, and they said no, 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 no. So we're like, fuck it, we'll just do it later. I mean, it's not a high priority. But yeah, we got absolutely slaughtered in that fight. Absolutely slaughtered. Not even close. We killed a few of them, but they actually captured a bunch of our ships, so it didn't really matter. Do some Chebex. You already got frigates queued up. No, Chebex. And we'll do some merchantmen up here. Got 10. We'll do like 40 or something. Alright, you got two deckers, two deckers. I think everyone is queued up to go. Ah, Zeta. Let's do some more Chebex up here. I might as well do them over here as well. And some more heavy frigates. And up here you might as well get some as well. More two deckers. 
All right. So we have a navy rebuilding. We're still going to win this war. It's just, you know, not as awesome as it. I mean, it's just not as awesome as it could could have been. But whatever. Not going to cry over spilled milk. And our supply limit in these areas really sucks. So uh, I guess we can go sit in our catch for a few turns. But damn. Now, Fez is probably better. We'll go to Fez. It's fine. Just need to heal up before we keep going. And Ancona is done, so we can go home. That's good. If we take that, we'll actually give it to Urbino, which is fine, because I wanted to give it to Urbino anyway. We'll just give... <coughs> God fucking damn it, I can't stop coughing. We'll just give, like most of these to Urbino, and then we'll release Naples and give Naples the rest of the boot, and Urbino can have, you know, whatever we take up here. It's all good, it's all good. And yes, I do remember that we wanted to give Byzantium the islands, so they can be the island people, you know, they can have this and this and this and whatever. It's not a high priority, but that's what we promised them, so they'll get it. Eventually. Maybe. Instability's a plus two, so let's stop investing in it. It's kind of a waste of money at this point. Well, not a waste of money, but it's a waste of technology training, because we're not training anything while we're doing stability. Castile has <coughs> oh, Castile has a regent. Britain also has a regent. Oh man. Oh man, I gotta stop coughing. So many regents in this world. <coughs> oh, I bet that sounded pleasant. Oh there you go, they got peace already. So they took that, and that's it. That means Cape Verde is open for grabs, but without a navy, we can't take Cape Verde. And their navy is probably just fine. You know, they have 59 and 73 still standing strong. Yeah, we can't call them to arms because they just... I can't call them to arms because they just got peace, and I can't stop coughing. Anyway, we'll pause here and come back when we're ready for peace, because it's probably going to be... Um, uh, maybe a year or so until we can get our troops, you know, healthy enough to go back down and kick some more ass. So I'll see you guys when we're ready for peace. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back. As you can see, we've completely taken over every little bit of Morocco, every little piece of land they have in Scandinavia, everything in Italy, and everything in Africa. We've taken over their islands of Cape Verde, Fernando Po, and that's all they have in the entire world. But somehow, after doing all that, we only have a war score of 86. Huh. It doesn't make much sense to me, but whatever. Let's start demanding. I want your Italian states. And I want all of this to make a new vassal. And that's only 63. So now we can take Wagaduki, which will go to Ashanti, our vassal, because they have a core on it. And we can start considering taking some stuff down here with the intent of releasing Mali, because Mali is a state that we can release down here. So why don't we do that? Just uh, get... A, oh, 98. They won't take 98. No, oh, well, they won't do that then. Um, whatever. Are any of these... Mali. Yes. Two of them are Mali. Okay, we'll do that then. That's fine. And that's going to be so much infamy, it is ridiculous. Ridonculous. But it's totally worth it. Because infamy will go away as we release vassals. And this is something that we've needed for a long time is this possession over here so that we can 
like make a nice, happy, orthodox land out of what used to be Moroccan infidel bullshit. I just thought it was funny. We can also make them release Spain, and Spain would only get Cape Verde and Fernando Po. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to do that to Spain, because that would just be hilariously bad. Anyway, give us some dollars, please. Yes, dollars. Actually, no, no, no. I don't need money. Get rid of some of your cores on my lands. Uh, Cairoan. Uh, Asyut, Giza. Uh, well, that's a start. We'll make them get rid of more cores later on. Oh shit, 34 infamy. We're over our limit by 9. Good lord. <laughs> yes. But, no, oh, look, our name got larger. The text, the font actually increased in size. So we're over our limit, right? So that means we are dishonorable scum. Is that what it says in here? Um, we are worse than dishonorable scum. <laughs> Yes, 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 but we are the most prestigious country in the world. We are Besarab, the first Basarab, and we shall release Mutapa since they are entirely orthodox. So, hello, Mutapa. Where are you? There you are, Mutapa. I do. Alright, there you go. Hello, Mutapa. What's up, bro? You want an alliance? Of course you do. And now we're under the infamy limit. Still have a ways to go, but that's fine. We have plenty of other people we can release. Uh, we could start with Naples. We could do... Mm, nobody up here. But, you know, we could do the half sits down here. We just need to start converting people, that's all. So let's get on with that. It's going to take a while, but that's fine. So let's get our army over here to deal with this bullshit that's going to be generated by owning all that shit. And these we can just give them away to, uh... Oh, I thought Ashanti would have Wagadoogie since they have a core on it. See? Core, Ashanti. Well, let's go ahead and give it to him. Here you go. Wagadoogie! 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 You have a core on it, okay? Ashanti. They need their own little name. Ashanti. But yeah, this is... Well, these two we can give to Ashanti, because there's no other cores there, but these two we'll have to save for Mali. So, I don't know. Warudugu. Ashanti's just never going to colonize it. Our buddies are not colonizing anything. But whatever. It's no big deal. You know, being orthodox, they should have some colonists. Just by being orthodox, you, you, you get colonists. Ah, well. Again, it's just, it's not the end of the world, so I'm not going to worry about it. But we will have to take some time converting people now. What's our chance here? 18.2, 18.3. Well, it's only 14 in Tunis, but everywhere else is pretty good. So we'll convert some of those, and then we'll release the half sids and they can convert the rest. Because, like, uh, what's an example? Well, these guys... I was pretty sure if I released them, the capital would be in Shervan, which was already Orthodox. Dagestan was the only place that was not Orthodox yet. So we released them, and sure enough, the capital was in Mergen, which was already Orthodox, so it turned out fine, and they converted Dagestan on their own. So that worked out. And uh, similarly, where else did I do that? I don't remember. Anyway, you can always take a little risk and release them, and if they turn out wrong, you can just annex them back, and then, you know, it's no big deal. But anyway, that'll have to do for now. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We took a buttload of infamy to kick Morocco's ass, which I think is holy... Actually, I'm going to bring you down here. Put you to the coast. I think it's wholly justified, because uh, they're dickholes, and they deserved it. They've been pushing the world around for long enough. And the time had just come for them to be put in their place. And their place just happened to be underneath our boot. I mean, that's, that's where a lot of people belong, is underneath our, boot, or underneath our boot. So, 
thanks for watching, guys. I, I'm, I apologize to all the naval enthusiasts out there because our navy was just horrible. We're rebuilding. You know, we're not, we're not feeble. We have a lot of ships already rebuilt. I can't believe how fast we rebuilt a lot of those ships. And, uh, oh, wow, we never even got much war exhaustion during that war. That's kind of cool. But our sliders are exactly at zero, so that means we can now accept some naval ideas. Like Seahawks, morale goes up, and, and naval tradition goes up, so we're going to have some better generals and stuff like that. Naval tradition's not that great, but, you know, army's good, cultural's good, eh, whatever. We'll get some nice navy stuff. We have a, a naval reformer. Isn't that what this guy's called? Naval reformer? Okay, I'm hovering over is not working. But yeah, he gives you naval tradition, naval tech investment goes up, and the cost to get new naval techs goes down. So, useful. And we're still rebuilding a lot of navy stuff, so hopefully our navy will perform better in the future. But for now, this is, uh, this is Shenra2 signing off. So thanks for watching, guys. Leave some comments, ratings, subscribe, of course, if you want to see more of my bullshit. And <laughs> and we'll see you next time where I cough into the microphone every five seconds. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, welcome back. I guess I ended a little too quickly. Uh, just a few months after the end of the war. See, we've only lost 0 0.1 infamy so far. <laughs> we went and inherited Poland. So that's what the map looks like now. Poland had all that. Now, the only reason I pushed for this... Uh, Oh, God, our king died. That's what happened. That's why we inherited Poland. Radu is the new successor. Please tell me he's good. Please tell me he's good. We currently have a 6 4 6 general, or er, king. Let's see what Radu is. Come on, baby. 6 7 8. Hey, not bad. That's actually pretty good. All right, so, uh,. Gabriel's not that great, but his son is pretty good. I really wish you could gain or lose stats for your heir based on how you treat them during their years as your heir, but oh well. But yeah, we inherited Poland with the the intent of just making another Orthodox vassal. Now we can give some of their shit to Silesia, of course. But it's going to take some time to... Uh, convert all these lands that are not orthodox as you can see none of their lands were orthodox but hey that was actually super duper quick that's what she said but I mean you know going from the personal union war to inheriting them that was insanely fast and it sure happened at a weird time right after that big battle we just took a buttload of infamy it's nice that you don't take infamy for inheriting people because that would just be horrible Trading a wool no longer affecting us. Eh, whatever. We inherited the throne of Poland. So, 4th of November, 1689. Uh, oh yeah, we dishonored our alliance with, Bro with uh, Broberia because they started a war that we didn't want to join. So, whatever. Just a war over here against Malacca. It's like, uh, there's no point. We're talking, so, there we go. So, it was October. That was, that was when I ended the video. It was October 11th after we got our alliance with Mutapa down here. So it's only been a couple of weeks, <laughs> and we just inherited Poland. Anyway, we'll end the video here. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.